Cleary, still got here. Um, not back for a Transformers review. Going to be talking about something else. Uh, as many people are aware, I have been doing Games Workshop games now for a good number of years. Um, I my first my first foray into such a thing was actually Space Crusade. And to give you an idea of just how far back this was, my grandmother got it before Christmas by buying it from Argus and not Woolworths. And so I've been in through Games Workshop for a long time now and um, seen it come and go and I've seen how it's changed over the years. I mean, I was most active in the noughties um, and, you know, I, I'd spend Veterans Night on a Tuesday and a Thursday at the, the, the shop in, in, on opposite a square peg in Birmingham before it moved to the ball rink there in the street now. That's how long ago it was. And so I've been part of it for a, a good while now. And of course, the big thing that's come out recently is, of course, the fact that Warhammer Fantasy is now gone and it's been replaced by Age of Sigma. And obviously, you know, a lot of long-term fans are feeling very put out by this. Um, now, my thoughts on it. Uh, well, on the one hand, it sucks that such an iconic game has gone. Uh, I've played fantasy, not so much with, um, uh, not so much as I play 40k, but I've played fantasy over the years. Uh, I did a high elf army that was very badly painted, and I think over the years, one, maybe two, three battles. At the most, um, I did an orc army that I actually sold before I ever actually had a game with. Um, and then I did a wood elf army, and my wood elf army I've still got. It's about 5,000 points. Um, go. That's not, I'm, that, I'm not here telling you about my, my stock of Games Workshop products. I remember playing Fantasy. And Fantasy was a great game. It really was. It was a very, very technical game. You know, it's the kind of game that you can lose before you've taken your first turn if you don't set up right. Um, it's and it's, it's a very unforgiving game. Um, by itself, is good because it's a very technical game. It really makes you think. You know, you can't stand there rolling dice while having a chat about the latest movie that's come out in the cinema with your mate who's not even involved in the game at all. It's not like 40k. Um, it's a very, very in-depth game, um, and a, a lot of the people that played it were the older gamers, people who've been playing it for a long time, um, and I will, I will say this now, this is just my personal experience, but a lot of the dick gamers played fantasy. The power gamers played fantasy. Encyclopedias played fantasy, um, and a lot of knobs played fantasy. Um, just, just as of my personal experience, I'm not saying that's true of everyone. But there we go. Um, I remember when I, a game I played when I was still learning fantasy, and I played against another high elf player, and he was he was a dice wizard. He just rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled. I didn't see what he was doing. He didn't tell me what he was doing. He just went. Uh, threes and fours and twos and ones and sixes, those are your three dice, roll them, oh, they're dead. And I'm just like, there we go, job done. That wasn't fun. That wasn't fun. I remember another game I played, it was playing later, it was my Wood Elf army um, going up against a Lizardman army, it was my skirmishing Wood Elf army. Um, and by about turn three, it was clear that I was winning. No. Okay, I wasn't going to be able to take down his giant monsters, but I was still, at the very least, I was going to get him towards a draw, um, which he didn't like. So he promptly decided to use my still relative inexperience and not so in depth knowledge of fantasy to cheat. The arguments of, well, I'm an ex staff member, I know the rules. It wasn't until I was talking to uh, Adam Pellet Van Dead. Then I really, when we were going through the game, talking about the game, we go, yeah, he was cheating. Yeah, he was cheating. Yeah, he was cheating. 
in order to win. So, yeah. Of course, my greatest fantasy moment was when my unit of high elf spearmen ran down, um, beat an orc warboss and his retinue of black orcs in close combat. They ran away and I properly chased them down. That was a fun battle. That was a good battle. Uh, but anyway, yeah, aside from that, this was to, this is to talk about, you know, the fact that Age of Sigmar is now out and what's going on with it. Well, at the moment, um, it, it, the Warhammer world is currently going through what the Star Wars world went through when the EU changed. When the EU was declared null and void, it didn't happen in the Star Wars universe. The, this, this, and this is official canon. And uh, I remember actually. I remember when that came out, when the Star Wars, when it was declared that the EU no longer existed, there was only the movies, and I remember putting a very hurt fan wanky post on Facebook about how well, to me, your new movies don't count, or something as equally as whiny and petulant as that. Uh, it wasn't until later on that I, I sat down and I thought about it that I realised, you know what, probably the best decision that was done because. So much stuff in that, in that, in the EU was not only, in many regards, convoluted and contradictory. Trying to put all that into a Star Wars movie to please the die-hard fans, you know, who know who the Infinite Empire is, who know what IG-88 was doing on the Death Star, um, who know what happened at Bakora, uh, who know how the Rebel Alliance took the planet of Coruscant. Into, into these movies... It would have been too hard. So, as much as I didn't like it, I agreed with the decision to make the EU on canon. Regards to fantasy. Now, I remember the days when Games Workshop, now I sound like a real old time, but I remember the good old days. Yes, I do. Um, I remember the, the days of, when, when Games Workshop was still a company that was run by gamers for games. Uh, so I remember when it became corporate and Games Workshop decided that it was just basically going to piss on all of its older customers in favour of getting in the younger bloods. That was a problem that Fantasy had. Fantasy was a very good game. It was a very technical game. But it puts it off to new players. Another thing that puts fantasy off, that put, would put, that put people off fantasy, was the initial cost. <clears throat> you know, for you to get basic units, and bear in mind this was back in the days where Games Workshop was still doing units of 20 goblins and 20 skeletons and, and, and 20 high elf spearmen in a box. And 20 imperial guard in a box, I might point out. Not this Astari Militarium faux Latin thing, whatever they're called now. Be they're the Imperial Guard, they've been the Imperial Guard since I first walked into a proper games workshop at about the age of 14. They're always going to be the Imperial Guard. Um, yeah. My first intro game in an official games workshop was about the age of 14 in Solihull. I was on holiday home from Ireland. I went into Solihull and I played Epic. Intro game. That's how far back I go. So, yeah, so you've got those two things with fantasy in that, you know, sorry, I didn't actually finish the point. When you buy, a, when you buy, you know, you buy a box of skeletons and another box of skeletons and, say, a vampire or a necromancer or something as your law choice, you've got more models in those two units than an entire 40k army. Fantasy it was, is, was, however you want to look at it, a massive money and time sink. Because not only do you have to buy the models, you've got to stick them all together and paint them, because, well, I've always had the rule that if you don't paint it, you don't play it. But there we go. That's my personal rule. Um, I never... Yeah, anyway, uh, stop going off on a tangent. You know, so it has that element. And, you know, people may not realise, but get Warhammer Fantasy Battle has been dying for a long time. It really has, and I will give Games Workshop credit in that they kept it alive for as long as they could. I mean, this was a gaming system that takes up a third of their shelf space in the shops. 
and it has been dying a death for a long time. And whilst it is still popular amongst the older gamers, one of the reasons why older gamers got pissed on by Games Workshop was because they don't spend as much money. They spend more time in a Games Workshop. They don't spend as much money in one go. You know, they might buy a unit here, and then a unit there, and then a unit there, and then a unit there. Whereas little Timmy, who's 12 years of age and coming on with his parents' money, just goes, gimme, 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 walks out with it, and then doesn't look at it again after three weeks. That was the angle the Games Workshop were going for, was get the kids in, get them playing, get them buying, and get them out the door, and if we never see them again, oh well, no problem. Because they spend more in three hours than in they spend more in three hours than an old time gamer will spend in three months. It's the way Games Workshop went. <clears throat> so yeah. There we go. So in regards to so that's the thing that really happened with fantasy. Now the other problem that Games Workshop has is that they have been losing money to indie games like War Machine and Malifaux, which have very fluid, very relatively simple gaming systems, whose models, I will admit, have come an awful long way. Because one of the things that put me off War Machine was I didn't like the models. Um, I didn't think they were that nice. But now that companies are using things like 3D printers and proper injection mold printers and things like that, they're really coming a long way. Um, Sorry, now that they're using things like 3D printers over injection mold printers, they've really started to come a long way. And their models have improved as their as their old injection printers got better. Um, well, injection mold casts or whatever it is, the way that they make the models these days. Uh, you know, these models have come up. They're, they're, the word of mouth has gone out about them. More independent retailers are starting to stock these indie games. And one of the reasons why that is is because you can buy... You can have 15 models and have a complete force. I'm a fantasy. Let me get that. You can have 15 models, have it as a complete army, and Bob's your uncle, job's done. That's your, that's your army. Games Workshop has been losing money on one fantasy battle because people don't come, because people stop playing it and they don't get new blood into the game. Um, gamers who still play it certainly don't buy that much because they've got their armies unless they want to start a new one and Games Workshop are losing business to um, smaller companies. All that coupled together that Warhammer had to go and had to be reimagined and there's an awful lot of butter out there on the internet and from a certain perspective I can understand that but if I look at it from a business side understand why Games Workshop did what they did, despite the fact that Games Workshop in the gaming world are pretty much just the bully boy. Um, there's a lot of things that Games Workshop have been doing over the years that has really put me off them, uh, to the point that I actually buy models now from independent stockists and discounts or second hand on eBay, other from Games Workshop itself, because I, so a lot of the things they do, I don't like what they've done. Yeah, that, I'm not going into that. Um, so from a corporate side of it, I can agree to a, to a certain degree with Games Workshop's decision to pull fantasy. Being said, I don't think it was the right decision. Um, I think this is going to alienate an awful lot of your older gamers. Now bear in mind, older gamers, despite what the, the misconception is, we're not virgins living in our parents' basements. You know, we have people, you know, they have children, they have families, they have friends who they could bring into this hobby. They could inject new blood into the hobby. You know, little Timmy sees daddy playing with his high elves and he wants to get some dark elves to play with him kind of job. I don't think it should have gone all together. There, I don't think that maybe, I don't know how they could have done it, maybe size that certainly made Age of Sigma, but make it as a fourth core game. If anything, if any gaming system should be pulled, I think it's Lord of the Rings. It's now that all the movies are thankfully fucking done, there's not much call for it. But then in saying that, I'm one of the few gamers that, I'm one of the few people uh, who are older gamers that actually really like Lord of the Rings. I thought it was a very nice gaming system. I thought it, I thought it played quite well. I didn't think it was particularly buggy. I think the models let it down a bit, but there we go. Um, I think Lord of the Rings 
was a, a venture that maybe Games Workshop shouldn't have done, and you know maybe that's a gaming system that should be pulled out. There we go. That's just me. Um, maybe made at Age of Sigma fourth. Um, maybe made at Age of Sigma a fourth core game. It's like Lord of the Rings 40k Final Fantasy. Models going that they were incorporated that, that you could incorporate the old models into the new ones. I mean, they, they did it. They did it with demons in that they just supplied them with the round bases. Uh, the rules I am not going to talk about because I haven't read them. So I know there's some stickler about the really stupid rules, like if your beard is bigger than your opponent's or something like that. I don't know. So I can't talk about the rules or the game itself. But I was in an excellent independent retailer in Galway, Donuts and Donuts. Which has got some awesome donuts in there, by the way. Um, I was in there and I had the opportunity to get the game, Age of Sigma. It's on the shelves, there's people in the shop playing it, and I had the opportunity to. And I, and I picked it up, and the first thing I do whenever I pick up one of these games, workshop games, is I turn it over to look at the models on the back. My first thought, my instant first thought when I turned this box over was they're Space Marines. Fantasy has basically gone and gone and brought. Space Marines in with Sword and Shield instead of Bolt Gun. That was my first thought. And whilst those models look quite nice, the Chaos models didn't really fit with me at all. I wasn't overly impressed by them. Um, so I didn't buy it. And actually there's a part of me now that was wishing that I had so I could have a look at this game and give it a try myself. I actually do wish I'd actually bought Age of Sigma. Just, to, just so I can have a look at it and have a play around with it and read the rules and see what it's about. I don't I mean, I don't know. I mean, games were, uh, and, you know, it, now that Warhammer, 40, uh, Warhammer Fantasy has gone the way of Space Crusade and Warhammer Quests and, what's it called, Death Race, Death Race or something like that, and Epic 40k and Armageddon, Hero Quest and Advanced Hero Quest, well they were always built for Epic, but they were really Games Workshop technically. Um, you know, uh, you know, now that all these have gone, all these games have gone, this game is, you know, the War of Fantasy has been relegated to the rules, to the to the, the vaults of Games Workshop games that are no longer endorsed or sold or even easy to get to through Games Workshop themselves. You know, it's a pity that Epic went because I loved Epic. Um, now that all this has happened. Age of Sigmar has come out. Uh, is this completely the end for Warhammer Fantasy? I don't know. I mean, Games Workshop, you know, it re-released Space Hulk. And it re-released a fantastic version of Space Hulk. Um, will we see a box set, limited edition run of it down in the future? I don't know. Maybe Games Workshop are starting to do more and more board game styles. I mean, you've got their 40k assassination board game that's come out, which is a game in a box. I don't need anything else to play it. It's a game in a box. Um, I nearly picked that up as well, but it, it actually didn't appeal to me. Um, and I wasn't going to... You know, I have the mentality, I'm not going to buy something unless I actually want it. I can't afford to do that. You know, unless, I can, unless I really genuinely want it, I don't tend to buy things on whims. So there we go. That's why I didn't buy Age of Sigma because the models didn't appeal to me, even though now I'm regretting it to a certain degree because I wish I had. Um, you know, so there is a chance that Games Workshop in the future may bring out a box set of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. I don't know. They may. They may not. It depends. Uh, from a corporate point of view, pulling Warhammer Fantasy makes sense costing them too much money to keep going and I don't think they were completely just fuck it, we'll get rid of it I think they actually tried to save fantasy I really do um, I don't know what they did between 7th and 8th editions between making, saying, turning around and saying that now you have to have, you can you get bonuses for having even more models in your army whether that was just an attempt to force people to go oh, must buy more models um, but you know, they did bring they didn't stop caring about it, they didn't just let it go by the wayside and die its death you know, they brought out new rules for it, they brought out new army styles for it. They brought out all the monster models that came out. I mean, that Nagash, okay, I know he's part of the end times for fantasy. That Nagash is superb. 
it's a beautiful model. Um, you know, or, but whether the idea from that one, but then the, you know, the cynic in me does think, you know, is, was the idea for bringing that out purely to try and revive fantasy, or was it to give us new models that can be used in Age of Sigma? Um, but you know, you've got other models that came out, like the um, the undead, the the Larmian vampire ghost wraith Khan thing. That was fantastic. I always wanted to buy one of them, and I just never got around to it. Um, so you know, I don't think Games Workshop have just arbitrarily decided, fuck it, we're going to get rid of one of our old school core games purely just to spite all these old fat boys. I don't think it was like that. I think it was a business decision that. Maybe they tried to save it, maybe they didn't, I don't know, maybe, but that eventually just came down to the fact that, you know what, we have got to cut our losses here, this is killing us. You know, Games Workshop has been losing money over the years to games like Malifaux and to games like um, War Machine, as I said, you know, and, and like with Transformers, Games Workshop has a very fine a gene, not gene, yeah, gene pool, just say gene pool, just for the hell of it, you know, it's got a very fine system. It's got a very limited number of people who will want to play this. You know, a lot of geeks like things like this, but that doesn't mean they're going to take the, put the time and the effort into doing it. It's everybody's choice, so they have to appeal to as many people as possible. Unfortunately, in this modern day and age, that means children. Uh, games Workshop, uh, there's an awful lot that Games Workshop don't do right. As far as I'm concerned, when it comes to things like older gamers and the way they treat other companies, the way they treat independent writers, uh, things like that, because apparently Space Marines are now copyrighted. There we go. Um, but I will give Games Workshop credit for two things. One, plastic models are still the best in the world. I don't care what anyone says. They're plastic models. Getting Ignoring fine cast and the, the absolute horrible, that was one of the biggest mistakes Games Workshop ever did, was reintroducing fine cast. That, because that stuff is just awful. Um, when it works, it works really, really, really well. When it doesn't work, it's fucking horrible. There we go. But their plastic models are fantastic. They really are. Um, even, you know, even their basic models like you get in the, um, like, the like you got in the last 40k uh, Warhammer release edition and the 40k edition, they're gorgeous models. Um, they still make the best models in the world, as far as plastic models, as far as I'm concerned. Only for their diversity. Go. And the other thing they do very, very well is they have an excellent fluff universe. Okay, it focuses a lot more on 40k than it does on fantasy, and now of course with all the shitstorm that's gone around with fantasy, so they have a, you know, they have a universe that, okay, it's nowhere near as rich as Star Wars it is, but, you know, it's, there's a huge amount in there, and there's some truly spectacular books, um, fantastic imagery, there's some pretty piss poor books, but let's face it, at least in space in Star Wars. You know, there are some pretty piss poor books. Uh, there's some very lazy books, even in the Horus Heresy. I think a lot of those, I think some of the books that are in the Horus Heresy are just in there just to fill it out. Um, you know, expecting everyone to buy it just because it's got Horus Heresy on it. And most parts, they're right. But there we go. Um, you know, Games Workshop does do some things right. And I think one of the reasons why we get such great models and one of the reasons why we get such great universes, um, and I think part of that is because they are called. Part of the reasons why we get so much great stuff, why we get these huge, fantastic plastic models like Nagash, um, are because they are corporate. For a business is cold and it's cruel, it's harsh. Um, do I think Games Workshop takes it too far? Yes, I do. I do think there are times and instances where Games Workshop goes too far with it. But there we go. The last point I'm going to make. It is in regards to fantasy battle. <clears throat> and it's the same as it is with the Star Wars EU universe. Stuff is still there. Games Workshop haven't tried to do a Microsoft and say, well, you don't own those games. We own them. You know, Games Workshop hasn't turned and said, you don't own those models. 
we own them, we want them back. Your model, the models are still there. Okay, getting hold of new models is, as time goes on, going to be harder and harder and harder to do. Making a new army is now going to become a lot more expensive because, of course, as the stocks dwindle. I mean, I don't know, did they try to pull all this stuff back from the independent retailers? No. no as they phase out all the models, they are going to end up losing all the old stuff, but fantasy is still there. People still sell fantasy armies on eBay. They still sell, you know, if you type in Warhammer Fantasy, you'll get page after page after page after page after page of it. I might only, you know, buy one elf spearhead, spearman head. But there we go. You know, the models are still there. The rules are still there. The, the rule books are still there. The army books are still there. The players are still there. Just because Games Workshop no longer develops a third of its store space to Warhammer Fantasy doesn't mean you can't play the game. You can stop to burn it. You can, sorry, you can stop to... So you can stop playing the game in spite of Games Workshop, or you can burn your Warhammer Fantasy army whilst listening to death metal. Petulant, petulant child. Um, doesn't mean that you have to stop playing the game. You can still, you know, the EU Universe will still read the old Star Wars EU Universe. I will still read the X-Wing Squadrons. I will still read um, uh, the Thrawn Trilogy. I will still read books like I, Jen. I, yeah, I know, I really liked I, Jen. Um, I quite like the, the accompanying trilogy that went with it as well. But there we go. You know, uh, but it means I can skip the use that bong shit. So those books were just like, uh, uh, I don't care if Jason's being tortured. I don't give a shit. Just get to the fucking fighting. Um, but there we go. You know, so. I, 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 I you know, they're still there. It doesn't mean that you can't play these games anymore. You still can. You can still write up your own campaigns for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. You can still play. You can still buy models. If you need to. But, I think I said it earlier on, a lot of fantasy players don't buy that much. They have a huge drop, um, cost drop at the start, and then after that they just carry on. They have their model. I haven't bought a full Warhammer Fantasy model in well, to actually put it into my high elf army, though I still want that new treatment and some of the new ranges and some of the... Yeah, I really should have bought some fantasy battle models when I had the chance. I can't afford to at the moment. Um, you know, on the hand, I haven't bought any new fantasy models since well before I left England. It's been five years since I properly, properly bought fantasy models. The odd piece here and there just to paint up, but that's by the, that's by, the by. So... It's not gone. It's still there. You can still get your High Elves out, your Skaven out, your Dark Elves out, your Lizardmen out. Put them on a table and play the game. I have Warhammer Quest in my room. I'll still play that if I want to. I should finish painting that. Yeah, I've got some of it painted. It's still there. I don't like the way the Games Workshop has gone. I've had over 10 years of watching them do things that I don't like. Yep. The games are still there. You know, just because, you know, and same with Epic. Same with Warhammer Quest. Same with the other games that they've consigned to history and saying they don't account anymore. Same with Battlefleet Gothic. I would not be surprised if we got a one-box deal of Battlefleet Gothic with new models. Hopefully a lot more models in there because you, you definitely need more than four cruisers. Dreadfleet was another one, a limited edition run that's now virtually impossible to get. I've got it and it's painted. It's painted quite nicely actually. That one, isn't it? There we go. That's my thought on what Games Workshop's done recently. Toodles.